So, look around. Look at all these people that are here for you today. I see people from all different parts of your life. I see your teachers. I see your classmates from people at school. I see your classmates from school. I see neighbors. I see family from all over. I see friends and loved ones. Right. I see people you have tea with. <laughs> I see older people and I see younger people. So I wanted to just share, I mean everyone knows there's lots of amazing things about Eva, but I wanted to share two things that came to mind. Um, one of them is just looking out here and knowing that Eva is really a connector of people and she always has been. She reaches out to others. She's not hindered by the barriers that stop the rest of us, often. She's drawn to people from her heart, and people respond to her in kind. She truly celebrates people, and she approaches everyone with true curiosity and respect. Okay, you're going to be bigger. <laughs> you made me cry a lot already today. Um, so I just, you know, when we were out, when she was little, and we would go to Church Street, the downtown mall area, Eva knew everybody. And I would say, Eva, who's that? And she'd say, oh, you know, that's Bill. He works at Ben and Jerry's. And I'd say, well, no. And I'd say, Eva, who's that? And she'd say, oh, that's Mary's grandmother. So um, it, was, it was really amazing having Eva in our family and really, you know, bringing us into the world in a way that we wouldn't otherwise. Um, the second thing about Eva is her passion, and anyone who spends any time with Eva knows that. She is amazingly passionate about everything she does. <laughs> and her cooking, if anyone's been at our house, there's always brownies. Or cake. Or cake. <laughs> and there's her music, and of course, dogs. <laughs> um, but she's also passion about, passionate about her friends and her family. And she's also passionate about her beliefs and her opinions. Yeah. <laughs> she feels really strongly about things, um, politics, social issues, justice. And she lives these passions, she jumps in, she perseveres, and she shares them with everybody. Without any, you know, like, I don't... I don't care what the other people think. <laughs> I can't do the conversation because I'm just like, you can think what I think, but I can think what I think. <laughs> so um, if it's okay with you, Eva, I want to share a little story that I think combines, um, you know, your connecting ability and your passion. Okay. So everyone knows that, um, that Eva was ill two years ago. Most of you know that. She had cancer. And she was very, very brave throughout the whole process. And we are, of course, so thankful that she um, emerged from the other side healthy and strong. Um, so we spent a little bit of time in Boston in the hospital there. And we were there for a week when she had a big surgery. And um, members of her family were there, and everyone was very supportive. Um, and you know, I, I remember all that, right, when you do too. It wasn't always easy. But what I remember most was the way she moved through the, the ordeal. She was so gracious, and she made so many friends, <laughs> right? There was the surgeon that loved her. There was the nurses that loved her. There were the volunteers that loved her. There were the hospital staff that loved her. And I have a, an image in my mind of a couple of times when Eva was in bed, and she was plugged in with all her various kinds of tubes and everything. And sitting around her were a bunch of people talking. And one in particular I remember, there was um, the woman that brought her food, who happened to come with you from Barbados. Uh, yeah, I she so. was from Barbados or somewhere. Yeah. And then there was the man who changed the beds, because her, her neighboring bed uh, fellow roommate had just left. And uh, I think he was from China. Right? He was from China, yes. <laughs> and then there was one of the nurses, and I think she lived in downtown Boston. And we sat there, and I would say within, maybe it was a 10, 15 minutes uh, conversation, and everyone was talking to each other. And Eva talked to them about their cultures, and their religions, and their languages, and their food preferences. <laughs> and, you know, by the end of that 10 minutes, Eva knew a lot about them, and they knew a lot about her, but they also knew a lot about each other. And it was really beautiful. 
And when we went back a couple months later, because people wanted to go back and, and bring art supplies and toys to kids on the unit, right? And we came in with our big bundle, and um, everybody ran up. And it was like a great reunion, right there on the 17th floor, whatever it was, Mass General. 50. 50. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so um, you know, everyone knows that proverb. I looked it up on Google, and, and um, it takes a village to raise a child. So that was originally an African proverb. And I guess Hillary Clinton kind of made it popular here in the United States. And it does. As you were all, yeah, you were all being here attest to, it does take a village to raise a child, but it also sometimes takes a child to raise a village. And I would just like to thank Eva for that. Okay. And to let you know, Eva, that we're all excited to be here with you today as you do this wonderful thing, but that for you it's not a, a start, it's just a continuation. It's just a, just a joy. <laughs> 